Well, welcome back. It is April 21st, 2021. My name is Dan Kaufman, and I serve as the Director for Discipleship and Assimilation here at Harris Chapel. And we are thankful that you're checking in to our Talk With Me Wednesday. And so the last several weeks, if you've been following along, we've been talking all things discipleship, and we're going to continue that talk tonight. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. And these are all the passages that we've talked about throughout this uh, more recent Talk With Me Wednesday, this shift where we've went from uh, the last several weeks we had talked about being a disciple of Jesus. What does that look like in our lives? Uh, how does uh, Jesus want us to behave? How, do, how does Jesus call us to act? All of those things. And now we're kind of shifting gears from not just only being a disciple, but making disciples. And that commission that Jesus gives us to go out and make disciples. And then talking about the help and the leading of the Holy Spirit that we have for that. So if you have your Bibles, John chapter 20 tonight. And we're going to go ahead and hop right into the scripture because I have some great points for us in the applicability part of our study tonight. So John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23, this is where Jesus appears to his disciples. And it says, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And so we're going to talk about this passage and several different things about it and what it means. And so the first point that we want to make tonight is this idea of the peace of God. Jesus kept saying, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He says it twice in this passage. And what does that mean? What, what, what is that doing? And if you look back throughout all, all four of the Gospels, but even through John here, you see that when Jesus uh, is presented with his disciples, when he's presented with others, he brings this idea of peace because of who he is. You see, Jesus is the peace of God. He is the peace of God for the disciples right here. And this is what's so great because maybe you're thinking, you know, okay, I get that. I get how Jesus is the peace of God for the disciples, but what about us today as disciples of Jesus? We're not, I'm not having lunch physically with Jesus right now, right? What does that mean? Well, guess what? Just as the peace, Jesus was the peace of God for the disciples, the Holy Spirit is our peace of God today. That is why Jesus gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit right there. He breathed the Holy Spirit to them. And, and we could really dive into a whole separate study about that verse alone. But for the sake of time tonight, we're just going to talk about him giving the gift of the Holy Spirit right there. And so I want you to think about that. The Holy Spirit is our peace of God right now as we go through this mission of discipleship. So knowing that, how does the peace of God change the way you view your life, others' lives, and discipleship. So if we look back at what we just read, if, if we know this story, let me put this all together for you. Jesus is peace. He is peace himself. He is the peace of God. And so he brings this peace to his disciples in the hardest time. Remember that it said that the disciples were locked away in here in this room because they were, they were hiding from the Jewish leaders. They were scared. Their, their mentor, their savior, their Messiah, their, their Lord, the one that they loved was just brutally murdered. He was killed, right? And so they're locked away and they're thinking, they're thinking, what, what, what are we going to do, right? And even though Jesus had kind of been preparing them for this ministry, they didn't fully understand what was to happen. And in fact, they fully didn't understand that the resurrection was going to happen. And, and we talked about that several weeks ago as well, but they didn't know what was going on. So they were hiding away. And so what does Jesus say? He says, peace. I bring you peace, brothers. I bring you the peace of God in the hardest time that they had faced. Why? So that they could go. So that they could go. Because, because you see, Jesus knew that they couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift of Jesus to his disciples. That same gift is to us. Because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot carry on this mission. We can't do discipleship without the Holy Spirit. We can't proclaim the gospel without the Holy Spirit. And that's the mission of discipleship, right? To share that. So we need the Holy Spirit. So, if the Holy Spirit is our peace of God today, how does that, knowing that, the peace of God, change the way you view your life, your call to go out, 
others' lives around you in discipleship. And you know, throughout the book of John, I, I, I read this a little bit ago, the, this gospel in particular talks about Jesus being sent from God 40 times. 40 times. So that's pretty important. And what's so neat is Jesus says this in this passage. He says, just as the Father sent me, I am sending you. So we know the importance of God sending Jesus. If it's mentioned 40 times, it's probably pretty important. So God sent Jesus for a mission. And now Jesus says, just as I was sent, I'm sending you. I'm sending you. So let me ask you this. And we talked about this a few weeks ago as well. But where are you being sent out? Just as the Father has sent Jesus, Jesus is sending you. Where are you being sent out? Where is your out? If you're taking notes, which I hope you are, this is definitely one you want to fill in the blank. Where are you being sent out? Where are you being sent? How are the disciples, and now for today, you and I, able to continue on the mission Jesus is sending us to today? Because, you see, this mission didn't end when Jesus was crucified. In fact, it was resurrection, post-resurrection, when Jesus came back and he gives this great commission, this great mission for these disciples to go out. And so that means that that mission, that commission is still given up to us today because it is alive, because Jesus is alive. And so it is alive and well in anyone who calls themselves a disciple of Jesus, a.k.a. a Christian, that you are to go and you are to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone. So how are we able to do so? Well, you got to go up to that first point, the Holy Spirit. We're able to do it because of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus knew we couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit, right? God knew that we couldn't carry on this mission without him. So he said, Jesus. And then Jesus is like, you know what? You can't continue on without me. So I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. So he gives the disciples the Holy Spirit. And that's where we are today. We have the Holy Spirit, the empowerment and the leading of the Holy Spirit to guide us in this process. Thanks be to God. So our mission is to share. That's our mission. As disciples of Jesus, as Christians, we are to share. And just as the Father sent Jesus, Jesus is sending us today. I want you to think about that this week. Jesus came for a mission, and now Jesus is sending us on the mission. That's our takeaway. If you don't remember anything else, remember this for this week. Just as the Father sent Jesus, Jesus is sending us today. And this is only possible, only, big word, only possible through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And so if you are still, if maybe you've joined us a little bit late in this study, in this series, I like to share what our definition of discipleship is. And and, and this this helps me each week as I either rewrite it or I reread it. And I think about where where we've been, what we've talked about, and where I see the Holy Spirit leading me in this process of discipleship. So discipleship is a life committed and devoted to growing in Jesus and his teachings while sharing that process with others so that they may come to know and grow in a life with Jesus. That's our mission. That's the great commission to share that gospel with Jesus. You know, it's really interesting because that last verse in this passage where it talks about the forgiveness of sins, if you forgive them of their sins, they're forgiven. If you don't, they're not forgiven. You know, that can hang somebody up. But what that is really talking about is proclaiming the gospel because it is through the disciples of Jesus proclaiming the gospel that others accept Christ. And it is through that acceptance of Jesus Christ that forgiveness happens, right? The, us as disciples, we're not forgiving sins. Let's, let's get that clear. We're not forgiving sins. I am sharing who Jesus is and that he forgives sins. And when somebody accepts Jesus from what I have shared, their sins are forgiven. That is the effect. That is the mission that Jesus is calling us to, is to be his instruments, to introduce them to who he is. And then after they've been introduced, that we help them grow in knowing in him, that we help them in his teachings, that we help them in their understandings. And we're sharing that process with others. Can somebody testify? Amen. Amen. And so as we're talking about sharing this process, you know, we we do this prayer each week. And this is an invitation to accept Jesus. 
right? This is that, this is the person who forgives those sins. This is me sharing the proclamation of the gospel that Jesus Christ came and died for your sins. We say it word for word here in a minute. And you accepting that, that is when forgiveness occurs. It's not through me. It's not through anything I'm saying. It's through the blood of Jesus on the cross and you accepting that and asking for the Holy Spirit to move into your life that those sins are forgiven. But you know, I want to go a step further and I haven't done this yet and, and, and it's well overdue. I need to go a step further because if you say this prayer tonight for the first time or for the, or for however many times, if you say this prayer tonight and you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, or you say, you know what? I want to go deeper in my relationship with Jesus. Will you just drop a comment in YouTube, Facebook, send an email, private email. So no one has to see it. If you want to keep it private, that's fine. Call me, uh, email the church, call the church, whatever. I want to take this a step further because if, if discipleship is helping you come to know Jesus, and then that second part is helping you to grow in Jesus, well, I need, I need to take that further step to help you grow. And I want, I want to be there for you. Everyone here at the church wants to be there for you. So if you are ready to take that step, it is our responsibility as disciples of Jesus. Christians, are you listening? It is our responsibility to be there for our brothers and sisters when they come to accept Jesus Christ, that we, we grab a hold of them and we celebrate with them and we help them to dive into a life fully committed and devoted to Jesus, right? That's discipleship. So if you, if you say these words tonight and you are recommitting or you are committing your life for the first time to Jesus Christ, let us know somehow because we want to help you in this discipleship process. You ready? Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins and then that you rose from the dead. I turn from that life of sin and I invite you to come into my life to be the Lord of my life. I want to trust and follow you as my savior. Father, thank you that you have just heard me. I know that you always hear me. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are and that you hear us and that you help us. Thank you for stepping into battle with death for us. Jesus, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what we just read tonight. I thank you for the gift of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, making what I'm doing right now possible, making what we do in discipleship possible, making the sharing and the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ possible because of who you are and because of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you for that. I thank you for what you're doing, God. I pray that this just touches someone's life, that, that it just moves in a way that, that someone comes to know you or that someone grows deeper in their relationship with you because of what we're talking about. And I say this in the power of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sorry about that. My phone was going off. That's, that's part of one of these things of recording. But uh, I, friends, I'm so thankful to share this stuff with you. I love doing these quick studies with you. We're going to do them every Wednesday night for the foreseeable future. And so they're going to be 15 minutes of your 10 to 15 minutes of your time. And we're going to hop into the word. We're going to take the word. We're going to apply it directly to our lives. And we're leaning on the Holy Spirit as he leads us through this discipleship process. So next week, we're in the book of Acts. See it on your slide. Read up ahead. And then we've got some great testimonies coming from some, some people that have really, really seen the power of discipleship. We'll see you then.